Welcome back to the Prepared Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Austin. And I am your co-host, Trevor. Yeah. Trevor's back. That's right. You guys get a double dose of fun. Well, it sounds like a week ago. It's not like a double dose. You weren't on I this mean, weekend when I did like a the... double dose. I mean, like I am two times as awesome as you. Ergo, double dose. <laughs> mm, mm, what you're know. hearing in the background, folks, that's would be a fight to the death between two feral animals. Yep, that's my... My dog, it's Drake and Jack's hanging out with us while we while we record yet another fine episode for you listeners. And uh yep, that's that's the dogs too. It's great. The whole gang's here. Why why is the small why is the smaller one smarter than the big one? He's not. He's not. I promise. It doesn't sound like it, but he definitely is. Uh <clears throat> so we are we're going to tackle, uh, at least try to tackle, most of what is left over from uh, the grab bag questions that Lexi and I started mm-hmm. a while ago, honestly. You know, let me read these, so I'm kind of excited to, to hear what people yeah. have to, like, ask you. Oh, I mean, Ask us. Ask us. I'm a part of this. I, c- I contribute and stuff. <clears throat> these are questions that all came in from our email box. I'm not going to give anybody's email address, but we will read the questions and try to respond accordingly, um, at least to the best of our abilities. Uh, before we get into the questions, I want to make sure we take the time to say thank you to our supporting sponsors here at The Prepared Mindset. First up, EclipseHolsters.com. Guys, you're looking for a holster. Can't say it any easier than this, any plainer than this. Check out Eclipse. Guys, they make great products. Uh, and they have, outs- I mean, really outstanding customer service uh, in, in the world today, right, in the industry today. Great companies set themselves apart by the level of service that they provide, whether that's lifetime warranties, whether that's fast shipping, whether that's an extremely high quality product. And Eclipse actually hits on all three of those. They hook us up with the discount code prepared mindset, all one word, you guys will save 20% off of your order. So whether it's just a holster, a mag carrier, a dump tray, whatever it is, 20% off the order. Additionally, you guys spend over 99 bucks, you get free two day FedEx shipping and they guarantee your order will be in the mail in three business days or less. It's pretty outstanding stuff. Super proud to be part of their ambassador team. Can't recommend them enough. Eclipseholsters.com. Again, our code, prepared mindset, will save you 20% off your order. Also, MyMedic.com. Whatever you guys need for whatever life throws at you, head over to MyMedic. We have the code mindset20 to save 20% off. Honestly, whatever you need, really, truly. Whether you need a IFAC kit, or I'm sorry, theirs is the MyFAC, right? That's their flagship product. That's what I carry in my vehicle. Whether you need something for the boat, for your trips on, out on the bike, for our four-legged companions, MyMedic has a solution for each of those contingencies. And if you already have a, a, if you already have a kit, you just need some pieces. You just need to add some things. They sell all their components separately and package separately. So all you got to do is add them into your kit and you're good to go. Again, they gave us the code MINDSET20. It's going to knock 20% off your order. And they did just recently roll out the rewards program. So all your purchases will start building points for you to uh, earn back all kinds of free shit. So go check them out, mymedic.com, another supporting partner here at The Prepared Mindset. You can also access our affiliate link through our Facebook offers page for MyMedic, as well as our link tree on our Instagram if you guys use our affiliate link, you can still use code mindset20 to save 20% off, but it just makes sure that 10% of whatever you spend comes back to support us here at the Prepared Mindset <laughs> Podcast. Lastly, Dry Fire Mag. Great tool. Can't say anything else. It's a great tool. If you're if well you are even money. Rem- yeah, it's it, they're fantastic and some of the best money that you'll spend. If you are even remotely interested in improving your shooting, you have a SIG, a Glock, an M&P, a Springfield, Head over, use our link in our offers page or our link tree, right, again, through Instagram. Pick up a dry fire mag today, or if you want to wait a couple weeks, they should be rolling out the smart dry fire mag and get to training. It'll be great, great money spent. You will not regret it. Awesome, awesome training tool. Again, that's dryfiremag.com. Okay, so... <clears throat> Let's let me get so this. You want to do this. Is there a is there a method, or you just want to like dive in? You just want to go ahead first. Oh my god, is that list redacted? Oh well, I mean it, it's a it's a list that was compiled a while back. So yeah, I mean I I, I knocked off the ones that um that have already been covered oh, in the last episode. I was thinking there was like something good on there that maybe like regular folk weren't allowed to see. But. Oh no, no, it's not redacted. I mean, I guess I could redact it. 
But I feel like it would give us a lot more credibility on like the dark web. I don't think that's gonna. I don't think we have any credibility, let alone getting. We're not getting any more anytime soon. I think that's a safe assumption. That's probably true. But it's cool to pretend. Yeah, uh, and we're no, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right. So what do we got? Okay. So first question. Yep. Uh, best choice for home defense: an AR, a handgun, shotgun, or I guess other. I'm not sure what other means. Other could be a lot of things. So the most impactful video I've ever seen was on YouTube because I was asking myself the same question. The most so, impactful video ever, or just for this just for, just for this. Oh, no, okay. no, no. The most impactful YouTube video that I ever watched was significantly different. But yeah, we can't. Um, we can't this talk one about was. That. Uh, I, th- I want to say it was the tactical rifleman, and he kind of put it in a context that was just very meaningful because it you know it was him with a dummy and he was an intruder with his arm around the person's neck okay so you've got like this little four by six piece of skin that's like the side of my face what are the odds if you use a shotgun you're You're not also gonna pepper your wife's face with buckshot (laughs) yeah Ooh. well which which kind of you know had that moment of clarity it's like okay so the shotgun is immediately out because if i'm coming out of you know i'm i'm out of a a fresh days and i'm grabbing my shotgun next to the bed i throw a slug into the chamber you know what and i i get what you're getting at there and what he was getting at but i mean you can also download a shotgun right if you if you if you load your shotgun so it it alternates between buckshot and a slug you could just download from that buckshot round to your slug if you really want to take that shot, I mean, most people probably wouldn't. I mean, I don't know. You're, you're doing a lot of hypotheticals, but that's a good point. Um, the spread is something to be considered, though. It's not as it's not as wide as people like to make it seem. It's it's really not. But in close quarters, you know, and then you got to worry about the wadding that follows. And I mean, that's that's true. Um, I, me personally, <clears throat> it, is, it is also the best option if you are concerned with over penetration. You know, uh, because it spreads out. Oh my god! <laughs> Bing, <laughs> Bing, bang. Um, yeah, I mean, so it's not going to – you have a much greater chance of your interior walls stopping those projectiles sure. if you were to miss or something than a handgun or uh, an AR or some kind of rifle platform. Um, so I guess it is very situationally dependent. Um, your marksmanship skills are obviously a great consideration uh, if you're home, right? If you have a, if you have a siding home versus stop right there. You just brought up marksmanship skills. Yeah. I have none. So that, combined with ammo capacity is why it's out of the conversation, especially if I'm woken up all bloodshot eyed at three o'clock in the morning, something's going bump in the night. Because for me personally, I want that AR-15. I want 30 rounds of freedom mm-hmm. being dispensed at my fingertips because statistically speaking, most people don't break into houses alone. They bring their friend or maybe yeah. two. Ammo so, capacity is a big consideration. And you, that's and as Hollywood has taught us, the yeah, double tap the, is invaluable. Oh, my God. Yeah, I let's use Hollywood. Movies. I'm I'm prepared. Let's use Hollywood to justify the argument. There's For there's almost no, everything in my life. Full proof. Yes. Full proof. But I mean, you are right there. The statistics do support that. You know, there <sighs> is usually more than just one guy. Um, it's one of the first things that we learned in our CPL class when we took it. Um, Mike, who was a retired sheriff, uh, training sergeant with the the county sheriff here. Um, you, see, you know, it look it, uh, you hear it a lot on like Instagram and YouTube these days as, you know, always be looking for work. Uh, But look for the other guy, right? Bad guys usually travel in groups. There's usually more than just one of them. They almost always have a buddy either breaking in with them or as a lookout, you know. So capacity is a consideration to some degree, right? Although you can't get – you really shouldn't get that wound up in the statistics because – you can also say, well, most engagements last 17 seconds, you know, or 12 mm-hmm. seconds or, or less than seven rounds are fired. Well, I it's- mean, agreed. We don't want to get bogged down in the math. Mm-hmm. However, I'm just saying if there's more than one guy, I don't trust my ability to put one down and then acquire a new target with a shotgun at three o'clock in the morning, especially yeah. not with my shotgun, because I think we can both agree it is a tremendous piece of crap. Oh, it's Stevens 320. Savage. Savage three twenty. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, shotguns. The nice thing about them is that they are usually pretty cheap for a very basic weapon system. Right. Um, they don't really jam. I mean, they can, but pump it's rare. Shot, pump shotguns yeah. are fairly reliable. Mechanically speaking, um, they're pretty. And there isn't a need for a whole ton of training on them. But I mean, that you can also apply a lot of training to. I guess <clears throat> it's very situationally dependent. What I keep next to my nightstand may be different than what you keep next to yours. Uh, I keep a Glock next to the nightstand, nine millimeter loaded Same. with hollow points. Um, my my Glock has a light on it, 
I also have a handheld that I, the same handheld light that I carry with me daily. It's taken off every night and gets put on the nightstand. So I have a white light. I have a nine millimeter, um, and it has a red dot sight, you know? So, um, do we think there's any viewers to the Ryan approach? <clears throat> the, the just cock the gun and they'll know what's up and they'll run away. Oh, okay. I should have specified the other Ryan approach. Oh, what? Um, I he doesn't, he didn't, at the time, this gentleman did not believe in firearms. He had a katana sword oh. and he, um, well, yeah. well, kids, there's no other way to say it. He sleeps in the nude. So he would get up with uh, the twig and berries dangling in the wind. Yeah. And that combined I, with a combination what? of screaming and wild hand movements. And this, this sounds really stupid, but this, I swear to God, I was, that was at a bonfire at my house when this story was, or this, this proposed methodology was shared with us, yeah. um, that, the uh, psychological warfare combined with the reach of a katana was <laughs> how badly would that mess you up if somebody just like ran at you screaming and their dong is just like bouncing around you're like wait what is happening i, I mean i'd probably be pretty scarred but they're gonna have more holes in them a- absolutely you know something about a nine millimeter and I mean, are you stopping are you it? still acquiring center mass or are you trying to hit it oh my god i don't i i mean if he's coming at me down a hallway it's gonna be pretty hard to not hit him you know no 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 it, it, not him. Oh, I'm not gonna be aiming for that. The dangler. Oh no, no, God, that's it's a horrific plan. And he's actually, it's not the first person that I've ever heard say something stupid like that. I have, right. I have heard people say, "Oh yeah, I have a tactical advantage because I I sleep with a red light on, and that way I can see." Oh yeah, his eyes adjust, adjust to the yeah. light faster. Which I mean, there is some science to support that, but it's that's kind of a stupid. it's kind of an I'm sorry, uh, that's asinine. stupid. Yeah, it's an asinine way to to justify your level of uh, unpreparedness. Of home what the unpreparedness? Yeah, it's the absence the of having an unprepared mindset, <clears throat> if you will. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it, it, to answer the question, um, it it really is subjective and contextually based. Um, I can just tell you, I I have a handgun next to the bed. Yep. Um, same. My my fear with at least where i live with an ar is just the over penetration right. with the rifle around houses are too close together it's yeah. not a viable option um, if you live out in the country by all means go for a rifle oh, if you're sure. not worried about the over penetration if you're not worried about hitting your neighbors just because how much distance is there well, i think a nine millimeter yeah. hollow point it's not going to over penetrate because it's going to mushroom on contact it's going to harvest it's, a bit more meat yeah it's it's, uh, it's it, i mean penetration is always something to be uh weary of right i mean marksmanship you you are accountable right every time you pull that trigger so i'm always mindful um, of penetration oh god bing that's two yeah uh any hoodles um yeah so there there you go that's kind of my approach to that one it's very subjective there's not like a clear answer to that so i think um, that kind of puts that question to rest right nope not even no. close what do you mean <laughs> what you I, keep for home defense you keep a handgun i yeah. keep a handgun question answered oh yeah everyone then therefore every one of our viewers should do the same thing i mean i would take my advice i'm a delight no fair i would say make your own do your own research yes i absolutely. would say make up your own mind okay so then let's, well, how about we say for your and i purposes yes mm-hmm. we prefer handguns because we live in a fairly densely populated suburbanite area where the yeah. houses are approximately what 20 feet apart 30 feet apart Something like that, yeah. Something like that. Okay. That's yeah. That's yeah. what I'm. I'm. I'm comfortable making that decision, and Facts. that's what I. Me that's too. what I use. Yeah. Um, okay. <clears throat> Next question. Um, Glock versus Sig versus M and P, and why? Ooh. Well, I mean, we both run Glocks. Yes, but that's because I'm cheap, and you already had an M and P. So, well, yep. I do own. I do own two M and Ps, um, and I own two Glocks. My wife, my wife runs a Glock. Um, so, I mean, I think consensus, we would say go with Glock. Um, right. Justification being it's kind of, it, it's like the Toyota Corolla of handguns. Um, mm. Not great to look at, right? Runs forever on whatever you put in it. Um, and parts are cheap and easy to come across, you know? Uh, Can we call it the Honda Civic of handguns? Honda Civics are just cooler. <sighs> yeah, I mean, you get the you get the analogy, though. Right, right? no, I get it. It's um, it's not pretty, it's not flashy, it's not the sexiest it thing, just but it, it just runs. It gets yeah. the job done. It gets it done reliably. And if you slap enough aftermarket parts on it, people on the internet will think you're cool. <laughs> They'll think you're way better at whatever you're doing. Yes, than, yeah. look at that guy. He's clearly dropped $2,000 into his $400 Glock. You know, he must be are, a really good shot. That's, that's actually become a, an argument online for why people think clocks suck because they're only good if you put $1,500 into them and 
That's because that's not true. people have. That's I mean, it's. I know it, it's not, but it just happens so often. There's, There's a all, reason why police and law enforcement <clears> largely <throat> have switched over to the Glock yeah. platform as a whole. Yeah, I mean, and <clears throat> those other options, Sig and M and P, are not man, not bad choices either. You know? No, Sig uh, is just, I think, a little bit more expensive than what it ought to be. But it's Sig. Sig You're getting is. that fine German engineering. Well, and <clears throat> Sig did kind of rush. Uh, the 365 and the 320 to market. Mm-hmm. Um, any of you guys listening that, that followed that launch a couple of years back, you know, there was issues with the firing pins and the drop safe, uh, oh, yeah. drop safe of yeah. the 320. If you drop the 320 on the back plate at just the right angle, you could actually discharge the pistol, um, which is a problem, right? Because striker right. fired firearms are supposed to be drop, drop safe. safe. That's that's the allure to that versus a hammer fired weapon. So, um, and, and Sig made it right. You know, they, they recalled it. And by all accounts, um, you see a lot of people that run 320s. They're the M17 if you're in the military now, right? Uh, a lot of people love it. A ton of people love their 365. I know Sam and Rob both run 365s. Oh, sure, um, yeah. They love theirs. Absolutely. I just have, we have big hands. Um, right. And when I was looking for a firearm, I, I went with the 43X. Uh, simply because I, I wanted more grip length and a little bit girthier of a handle. Nothing. N- girthy doesn't give... I'm sorry, should that have sparked something? Okay, okay so... Um, and and m and not bad either. Um, I think m and second generation, and now I guess you could consider it their third gen now that they like changed to a flat face trigger. Yeah, I was going to say the trigger shoe is kind of like what killed it for me on the m and uh, Yeah, I, I changed... I got an Apex trigger shoe in my... Gen one full size M and P, and that I will and, say that they look prettier than the Glock, but the, the conversation stopper for me has always been Glock's design and engineering has largely been the same since its inception in the late eighties, early nineties. Mm-hmm. So I want you, you guys at home, if you've got these handguns or you're ever at the store and you're you're in this particular conundrum, I want you to pop the slide off. Okay, don't take the barrel out, but pop the slide off of a Glock and off of an M and P, and then just flip them over. And what yeah. you see is going to be largely very similar. The same thing with Sig. Why? Because Glock largely pioneered the striker fire concept, uh, concept and design. design. Uh, at one point, I don't know if they still are, at one point, I believe, and you can tell me if I'm wrong on this, Smith & Wesson was actually paying Glock several million dollars a year for the design they, rights. Th- that was that was the case. It was because of the Smith & Wesson Sigma, which a lot of, um, I forget what the videos were called on YouTube. Back in the day, Iraq veteran 8888, and then his... Uh, his buddy, who unfortunately passed away, were doing video reviews on different firearms. It was one of the gun shop, uh, the yeah, gun shop channel. It was in a gun yeah. shop, um, but they used to call it the ghetto Glock, right? Because yeah. the Sigma looked, and now it's it the SD9VE. Like yeah. um, they look remarkably similar to a Glock. And I know a lot of people went out and bought them because they were like $300 guns, thinking that you would get the same performance, the same reliability, and the same aftermarket support as a Glock. Instead, you got none of those things. Yeah, instead, they're not terrible guns. There just isn't a lot of support. It's hard to find holsters for them and stuff. So, I mean, and it was really to save about 150 bucks. That's really all you were getting. And if you were, you know, diligent about your sales, it's more like 85 to 100, realistically. Yeah, I mean, I, sp- I think I spent 400 or 450 on my Gen 1 M&P. Um, <clears throat> I never saw one of those SD9s below 300. So, I mean, it really, it really didn't make a ton of sense. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, end of the day, yeah. you you can you can pay for the name, you can pay for some flashy design, mm-hmm. but honestly, if you're looking for no frills, you're looking for reliability. I think a Glock is the way to go. They've been doing it the longest, and clearly they're doing it right. And because everybody is kind of I don't want to say copy, copying, but they're to a certain point they're emulating what Glock did yeah. because it just and works. There's a reason why when holster companies are starting out, when they release new models of holsters, when there's new weapon lights to hit the market, new accessories to hit the market. It is marketed specifically towards Glocks first. Well, they, own, it's just, they own a majority of the it's, market share. Yeah. It's just good business. Yep, yeah. exactly. That's why you look at uh, a lot of holster companies out there, and if they're pioneering a new appendix rig, if mm-hmm. they're uh, trying something new with their light bearing technique or, or mold process, whatever. What are the you know? I, I I think I specifically remember Bravo Concealment when they came out their torsion holster um, that, that by design the holster without any kind of wing or anything was designed to help pull the gun closer into your body. For the first like year, all they made was right-handed models for the Glock 19 and 17, and I and maybe the. I'm 26. sure they did very well off of that. 
Well, yeah, I mean, that's what most people carry, and most people are right-handed. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> eventually, they added the light bearing, right? And then mm-hmm. shortly after, left-handed, and you, you grow and expand from there. But I'm waiting um, for a company to release a left-handed flashlight. I think that's a, a, a niche of the market that has not been addressed. Why don't you stop and think for a second about what you just said? It's cylindrical. The grooving, though. What are you talking about? Moving on. All right, what's the next a question? Left-handed what's the flashlight. We've like got a, a lot to get through. The viewers don't have time for your shit. It's like a left-handed spatula. It, there's no such animal. Listen, a left-handed spatula does exist. The slant at the end of the spatula cuts the other way. There is clearly a top and a bottom <laughs> to any good spatula. Okay. okay, before we get into the the finer points of, we can uh, have that conversation. of utensils and cutlery. Um. <clears throat> Essential supplies you keep on hand in the event of emergency. What should you have? Okay, what are we calling on hand first? Like in the home, in the car, on my person? Um, I mean, I guess I'll I'll answer by saying what I have in the home because mm-hmm. right now I work at home. Um, I spend Ooh, good call ninety percent of my time at home because um, I don't leave to go to the office. I hate so, that for you. I mean, on hand. Um, I guess it's just in general, right? Because if something happens, you're gonna try and get home, but. Um, <laughs> I have, I don't want to say I have everything. I have, we have some bottled, excuse me, we have some bottled water, um, radios. I have my ham radio license. So in times of emergency, when the cell phone towers may go down, the ability to transmit on your own without the need for a cell tower may be beneficial, will, will likely be beneficial. You, you have an additional way of gathering information and communicating with other parties. Okay. Um, Dried and and non-perishable food, right? Canned goods, uh, rice. Have all of those things in your cupboards. It may not be great. It's not the meal you're going to fucking love, but you'll have food. Uh, You should also, I mean, it goes without saying, we talk about shooting a lot thus far and on this podcast, but ammo, right? Um, Preferably hollow points for self-defense, but realistically, if you get into a, I mean, let's call this an emergency or a shit hit the fan or whatever, you can take what you can get. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would take range ammo, practice yeah. ammo, ball ammo, whatever the hell you can get your hands on. Yeah, I would. I, yeah, I, and, as long and, as it'll cycle, I'm fine with yep. it. Uh, I have at least a thousand rounds of five five six, yep. um, and at least a thousand rounds of nine millimeter at all times. That's what I feel. There's also two people in my household though that shoot um, or can shoot. So, you know, you figure out what number makes sense for you. Um, and plan accordingly off of that. Um, it is also good to have the supporting gear that goes with that. Right. So Full a plate kit. carrier, um, a belt holster, right? Uh, <clears throat> a chest rig. If you can't afford a plate carrier, go with a chest rig. Okay. Next best um, thing. Yeah. I mean, there's actually gonna... a lot of guys that say they prefer having soft armor or a chest rig yeah. as opposed to having hard armor. Well, it's, it's very expensive to have lightweight, effective armor. And a lot of guys, a lot of people, I shouldn't even say guys, a lot of people, right? Women too, getting into this, don't want to spend the money up front on plates because you're sometimes looking at four to $1,200 a plate. If you're depending on what you're looking at, right? It can get expensive. Right. Um, so, I mean, I, I have the basics on hand, and then obviously, uh, you know, I have a couple medical kits around the house with varying uh, levels of uh, supplies. You know, I usually have a EDC medic with me, which is just a chest seal and some uh, clotting gauze and a pair of gloves and a tourniquet. Um, in my vehicle, I usually carry with me a MyFac. That can, that, that can aid and address up to about four people. Um, so that's kind of the, the point of escalation. Um, and then always try to have some your medication on hand too. <clears throat> you know, even little things like ibuprofen, yes. vitamins, um, Tom's, I'm going to be yeah, that if, guy. If, yeah. If you have, if you suffer from acid reflux, have that medication. Cause that can make <clears throat> you miserable right away. Um, any prescription medication, try and have a week or two in reserves. If you can talk to your doctor about it. Um, now you're probably going to be fighting an uphill battle if it's, um, an opioid if you're if you're whatever if your situation requires that you're on that kind of meds um just know you're probably not going to get it but at least try um or if there is some kind of substitute and then the last thing i will say is have blankets have Mm. jackets and spare uh clean you know socks and underwear um you know, from a hygiene standpoint, those changing those things are pretty essential. You get, you know, trench foot or the 
the crotch rot. Yeah, the, the <laughs> I don't want to be rot. that guy, but I mean the itchy yeah. scratchy, you know, in a in a bug out situation or you know when there's a yeah. mass blackout or something, having to go picking through your pumpkin patch to you know like oh, dealing with any of that stuff is not a good not time. Fun. And not proper fun. hygiene will go a long way. So I guess in that extent, too, you can say... By the way, I'm assuming it's not fun. I'm not saying that because I've actually been unhygienic of course. for multiple days at a time. Of course. You're a model of cleanliness. Listen, I never smell. I almost Sorry, I almost never smell. I almost mm, never almost smell. Never. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I guess I would also say, you know, have your basic hygiene products. Soap and yep. uh, like a toothbrush, toothpaste. Uh, sure. Dental hygiene. I... I briefly touched on that with uh conan kilgore when we had him on at the beginning of the year it's something that's really overlooked in the field and you know if you got uh you got a toothache you got a rotten tooth or something or a cavity that, that gets infected or something can lead to abscess you can die from that shit yep you can die from an abscess which yep. all starts off of uh a bad tooth it can go right. south real quickly absolutely um, can. so i know that that's kind of a roundabout way of answering that one i mean i don't know what what you keep in your vehicle or anything while you're so out and about I have a, a, not like a special first aid kit, not a fancy one like yours, but I have a, a large first aid kit. It was purchased at Walmart, so it's not uh, super crazy. It doesn't, have a, it doesn't have a chest seal. It does have gauze. It has multiple different sizes of bandage, trauma shears, uh, antibiotic ointments and wipes, um, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's not super high end, but it gets the job done. It has saved my butt in multiple different situations. Um, we get home. I do have a... Um, let's call it like a gear bag that does have a larger um, first aid kit in it that mm-hmm. uh, I don't know where that came from, but it's got like a poncho, it's got a heat blanket, one of those tinfoil ones. You yeah, know? one of the emergency um, blankets to help you know, it's got, trap heat. It's uh, got flares, glow sticks, I have a compass, I have a crank radio, flashlights, pocket knives. Um, in terms of ammo, you know, I've got about 1,100 rounds of 9mm, and I want to say probably close to 500, 600 rounds of 5.56. Yeah. Um, and then maybe 150, 200 rounds of shotgun ammo in varying tasty flavors and calibers. Well, not yeah, them calibers, they're all 12 gauge, but you know, birdshot, yeah. buckshot, um, slugs. It's it's tough. I mean, I fully acknowledge it's it's tough with the ammo piece of it just because you well, do the want scarcity to still- the last two years has been real. Yeah, I mean, you do still want to train, right, when you can, um, so that you're mm-hmm. basically just consuming and not really replenishing. Well, and that was why, even though I'm a cheap ass, I did purchase my dry fire mag because yeah. it allowed me to simulate all that. Yeah, there's um, definitely stuff you can in do. In terms of, like, what I keep around the house, I'll be the first person to say um, I would die after about a week because I've only got a few cans of soup. I've got a couple cans of that fruit cocktail because, you know, I like my dessert. Um I have enough toilet paper to probably last a normal person a couple of weeks. Oh, good call. I know when uh, <clears throat> when lockdown first set in, dude. There, there were all the memes. There were the videos online. You have somebody who installed paper. a bidet in their house. Like that's like next level. But what are you gonna do if yeah. like the water gets shut down? You know, mm-hmm. I don't think that was ever a possibility. But it's like, yeah, you know, I'm outsmarting the toilet paper shortage. I'm just gonna blast cold water on my bung hole, and I'm gonna let the <laughs> let that do the work for me. Yeah, I mean, so toilet paper, and, and I, I include that under basic hygiene. It kind of goes without mm-hmm. saying, but I guess it is it is worth saying out loud. You should have. Um, and I think any man that's listening to this already has that emergency underwear. Like, oh, you know, like that, yeah. that pair that like, maybe there's a hole in it. Maybe the elastic ain't yeah. quite where it used to be, but you keep it tucked <laughs> into a drawer somewhere in case like laundry yeah, gets a I, little I scarce. Mine, I keep mine I definitely sealed have. in a Ziploc that says code brown on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I could, I could absolutely see yeah. that. Yeah. You just need to, um, you know, you stuff like that. But it, I also like to keep, you know, like antibacterial ointment, um, itch cream, burn yeah, cream. Your basic. I mean, um, and a lot of that, and a lot of that in a small amount comes in yeah. your standard first aid kit. Right. Um, well, if I also it, if keep, it's and this is where person. Trevor differs above everybody else, because I go that extra mile in a lot of facets of my life. I have like two gallons of mouthwash on deck almost always. I don't because understand. You bite uh, on let me tell you, yeah. shit hitting the fan is no excuse for gingivitis. Okay? <laughs> well, we just if, talked you're about sitting there, you're wondering where your next meal is going to come from. If you're going to survive the day, the last thing you want is the person sitting next to you to have freaking stank breath, all right? I'm That's a considerate, true. considerate person. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. I think we, I think we beat we that one much significantly to death, right? Yeah. We, okay, we moving on. What else you got? Um, preferred bourbon to drink. Oh, I mean, what kind of scenario, though? I knew you were going to fucking make this something stupid. Well, you no, no, no. Just Listen, there's, like, there's right no now, right answer to this question without more context. I, All right, so for those of you listening. Yeah, I mean, okay, go ahead. This go is, ahead, this is what I'm passionate about. But, okay, I need you to give me some context. I need you to give me a scenario, and I will choose a bottle, but it will only be of something that I have in my collection or is easily attainable. 
I, I really don't Give me think a situation. Come on, help me out here. The, people listening don't want me to just throw stuff at them. They need context. They need you to paint a picture in that rich, vivid detail that only you can. I uh, No, I mean, what's your your preferred bourbon to drink on a uh, an average Friday night if you're just trying to relax? No special occasion. Okay. Easy just to get your hands on. Was it a good day at work or a bad day at work? And I won't ask you any more questions. Usually, it's a well, it's a Friday, so it's a good day. It's a good day. I'm gonna yeah. want something. Um, I want something fun, something a little bit complex. I would say maybe. So if you're a rye person, I really enjoy Sagamore Double uh, Oak. See, rye. this said bourbon. This said okay. bourbon. Oh, excuse, rye is trash. Me. Okay, does it? Can it be allocated there, Master of Questions? Oh, I, I mean, if that's what you drink on a Friday evening. No, on a Friday evening. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some Maker's Forty Six is pretty attainable. That's yep. a, a nice weeded bourbon. If you want something a little bit harsher or a little bit higher proof. Um, I like Larceny Barrel Proof. Mm. Um, it's hard to go wrong with an Eagle yeah. Rare. That should be if you mostly find it. attainable if you can find it. Yeah. Um, to give you an answer that everybody should be able to find without having to like beat somebody. Oh, I know what this um, is. Yeah. I, I want to say Evan Williams Bottled and Bond with the it. Evan Williams Single Barrel. Yeah. They're both solid picks for that twenty to thirty dollar range. You can actually get um, the Bottled and Bond for like. I think the cheapest I've ever seen it was like fifteen bucks. It's yeah, it's you really can get cheap, it pretty cheap. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say special occasion pour. I mean, if you want to share, sure. My special occasion pour, I haven't actually broken into it yet, but it was this year's bottle of the year, um, and it was the Remus Repeal Batch 5. Nobody knows what that is, and they're not going to find it because it was this year's Batch of the Year. They can find it on the internet, but yeah, I've not, I bought one bottle because it was on the shelf, and I paid all of $5 over retail. Normally, that's against my credo, but I, I bent my rules a little bit this time. I know, yeah, you're and, a little stickler um, for the MSRP. Yeah, I have not seen it since since its release, um, so yeah. I, I would go probably with the either the Elijah Craig or the Evan Williams. Yeah. Um, Elijah Craig Small well, Batch, pours. Evan Williams uh, Single Barrel, mm-hmm. both around 30 bucks. Um, I enjoy both. Um, actually, I think the Elijah Craig small batch was my first for uh, like my first step into bourbon um, several years ago, and I still enjoy it. Um, you know, they, it, it's just it's a great uh, option if you're looking to get into bourbon. It's not too strong, not too weak. Uh, very easy, very easy to find. Um, alternatively, you could probably go with Buffalo Trace too. Um, but I've heard in some it's places it's getting harder and harder to find. Yeah, which is crazy because it's all over the joint here. Like you can't go yeah. anywhere that doesn't have. You guys Buffalo want Trace. a nice alternative to Buffalo Trace for about the same money? I recommend Boone County is pretty good. I don't know if or, I ever heard that. Um, Old Charter Number Eight is actually sneaky close to Buffalo Trace. Oh, so, so there's just something out there to look out for. Two decent options, um, and then yeah. we're just as an <laughs> FYI tonight we're drinking uh, store pick. Uh, Blanton's single barrel, really good stuff. Um, if you can find Blanton's, buy it. Fifty to sixty bucks. Sixty dollars is retail most places. Please, yep. <clears throat> for the love of God, do not pay more than seventy five yeah, dollars for this bottle. You'll Use you'll that find money places to build your kit, to build your first aid. Yeah, to there's take other... your lady friend out to a nice evening at McDonald's. I like, mean, don't yeah. don't. It's it's not, it's not worth it. Guys, no. buy it and. Like we were literally told this at our local grocery store that when they get they only get five or six or seven bottles in, mm-hmm. and the local party store guys will come in buy everything they have if they can, and then they'll turn around and sell it for two hundred dollars a bottle. Mm-hmm. So four times MSRP. Yep, and people will pay that money because they don't know any better. Yeah. Well, listen, guys, and and if anyone that works at Buffalo Trace or loosely is affiliated with Buffalo Trace, this is not me knocking on Blanton's. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. But I think it's fantastic at sixty dollars. I think they did a lot for the whiskey industry when they pioneered the single barrel, but do I think it's worth 150 to 200 dollars? Mm. I would rather spend that money on actually another Buffalo Trace product, which is Stag Junior. Or if I had to spend 200 bucks, Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend is fantastic for that money. You can just you can get so much more complexity for that. Or money. if you really aren't that up on your tasting of fine bourbon, like like me, right? I mean, you're okay. You do all right. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not, it's not my thing, right? So it could be if you you know take the money and, and roll it into something else. Go buy, yeah. go buy a couple tourniquets or something that's mm-hmm. you know, and then save a little bit of money and, and get a, a halfway decent normal bottle. I mean, or go the other way and buy multiple bottles at a cheaper price so you can kind of expand your palate a little bit. Like just don't spend, don't blow too. your wad on one bottle. Yeah, unless you really know what you're doing. I'm telling you right now, you're going to be disappointed. You're, yeah. You are. You it's not, it doesn't. It, it's enjoyable. It does not drink like. It a, doesn't hit like a two hundred dollar bottle. I'm yeah. telling you, if you spend anywhere near that, you're going to be disappointed. Yeah. Point blank. Um. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Get a good one. Dig in there for something good. 
let's go with uh, everything that happened the last two years got me thinking I need to change and be more prepared. Where do I even start? Um, YouTube. Well, let's... The Prepared yeah. Mindset Podcast. Yeah, I mean, you're here, I guess, so that's that's kind of a... That's a good start, I suppose. Not that we're very good at this, because I think we're pretty bad at this, but um, I think we name drop a couple places that might help you. But I would say, with everything, if you're referencing specifically the shit that's happened in the last two years, I think you're probably talking about um, the riots and uh, watching cities burn in the country for the name of whatever social equality or whatever yeah um i would say if you don't already i mean the the logical first step is a firearm of some variety all Followed right i'm not, I'm not gonna say a quality flannel and the baseball cap of the team where you reside i mean that's what i'm wearing i don't think that's what everybody needs i own the same outfit i feel like it's a pretty good <laughs> starting point i would if you don't own a firearm buy a firearm and if you do own a firearm spend the money on training um you know, and a reasonable one, you know, don't, if you have a little, like, fucking stripper pistol, 380 <laughs> or something, it holds, like, five rounds. Yeah, if you're listening to this and you're actively <clears throat> polishing your, what, your LCP-9, um, get something better. Yeah, I mean, get a quality handgun. I mean, your Saturday Night Special will do good in a pinch, but as a home defense weapon, it's sorely going to if be you lacking. Don't, if you don't know what a Saturday Night Special is, it's like a throwaway gun. It's like a little piece yeah. of shit, like a like a Taurus. It's like a literal one and done. The firing um, pin's going to snap after one round. Like a Taurus Spectre. I think it's called the Spectre. Those things are total garbage. Or a Sky 9mm that, that mm. sells for like $250. Um, I looked at getting one of those once. Yeah, oh God. I'm once so you it didn't. was turquoise, and it had pearl hand grips and and you looked at this for yourself it's okay no. i mean hey dude own your uh, own Listen, your i thought it was super cool i thought it was super cool i thought it would be an accessory uh-huh uh i mean so you get something like a glock 19 a glock 17 an m and p compact uh sig 320 um you could even get a spring get a glock I listen mean, friends yep glock 42 43 43x glock 48 that's what you need. I mean, when it comes to my personal safety, I accept no substitutes. I pack a Glock. If you're looking at something to com- to concealed carry, that's you know where I would start is one of the ones right. you just mentioned, yeah. um, 43, 43x, 48, 26. Um, or and if don't you're just get looking- Gucci with it, don't try and upgrade your gun. Yeah. Learn to shoot just it as it is first, and don't be that guy. For the love of God, I took my younger brother to the range. I took Chase with us, yeah. and I'm like, here, oh. shoot my Glock 19. And I made the mistake of giving him the stick mag that holds 32 rounds. And he just, like, I don't even think he he thought about how he was holding it. He just grabbed it, pointed it down range, and just mag dumped the entire thing. I'm like, yeah. first off, you just wasted almost an entire box of nine millimeter. Second, um, how many of those hit where you were aiming? Well, they all hit the paper, so they uh, they hit where I was aiming. Okay, well, yeah, not, do a uh, little better than that. Yeah, I mean, if you already own a, a decent firearm, um, whatever brand it is, it's in all seriousness, uh, in, in, make sure you have a good holster if you plan on carrying it. Obviously, we wholeheartedly recommend that you check out EclipseHolsters.com if you're going to carry. Um, if you already have those things, you know, I'm not trying to tell you to go out and spend more money on other stuff, but train, be competent with the weapon system. Um, past weapons training and weapons, um, I would say some of the best stuff that you can do is medical and medical mm-hmm. training followed very closely by learn a secondary means of communication. So, uh, ham radio, um, Morse code, something like that. Um, may, pr- preferably both, right? Um, yeah. those are two incredibly valuable skill sets that will make you an asset to whatever, network you become a part of while you're right. trying to survive um well and to that point it could have, go wrong. have a plan have an end yeah. goal in mind like what kind of setup you want to have because like don't just, i'm the yeah, first don't person to admit shit. that i like i yeah. impulse buy yeah and do i that. bought a lot of crap over the years that like is nowhere near my kit anymore well and yeah that's you like learn. several hundreds and hundreds of dollars that are just chilling in my workbench or in plastic totes just sitting there collecting dust waiting for me to give it away to somebody Yeah, because I didn't really consider what did I want my weapon platform, what did I want my kit to do down the line. Yeah, Not because I didn't care, but because I didn't care enough to dedicate the time to the, the research. research. Yeah, and that's and I get it. You know, In today's, today's culture of immediate appreciation, like I want it now, I, I think that's what I want, like boom, go, mm-hmm. click, 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 click. Okay, yeah, in my car. gratification, yeah, that all Americans fall subject to. Yeah. Um, take the time, right? 
mm-hmm. do some research on it and and don't just take your favorite YouTubers or favorite podcasts, you know, recommendation on it. Uh, what we say may not work for you. Um, so but it probably will. I mean, yeah, I like to think we're pretty well rounded, but <clears throat> do your research and make make an educated decision for yourself. If you decide you don't need a gun. I mean, hey, more power to you. I think you're wrong, right? I think everybody should uh, own a firearm, but uh, you know, I would say it kind of those are the, the the that's where you should start is a firearm and some decent training. You don't need to do the fancy holsters and a whole battle belt and all that shit. Yes, you do. You can get the battle belt. Do it. I think get the I one where the drop holster straps to your leg. Chicks think it's awesome. You look like Han Solo from Star Wars. Mm, well, we don't because we're fat and bald. But yeah, no, but they might. I, I, well, yeah. Okay. Uh, but you don't need all that. If you're really, truly just trying to cover your basis in the, in case of, um, situation, get a firearm. I would say you couldn't really go wrong with a Glock 17. Very standard, sure. very basic, very easy to shoot. Um, nine millimeter is more plentiful than other ammos. It's usually more affordable as well. Not right. that anything is plentiful or affordable in the ammo realm, but Right now, you know, it that will always mind. be that way. Yep. Um, it's easy to get parts for. It's easy to find a holster for. Easy to maintain, um, easy to clean. I mean, yeah. they're very simple guns. Yep. And then past that, like I said, uh, I would go to, I would go second to medical um, yes. or I guess medical slash uh, food preparation. Um, so what are, what are those like so. three, three rules to like medical? Like you want to be able to make holes? No, if it's, I don't think it's three rules. It's just. If you have the ability to create holes, you need to have the ability to plug holes. <laughs> I sure do love plugging holes. I can't Bing, plug. that's three. Yeah. Um, medical is important if you carry a firearm, which is why I put it number two on the list. Um, <clears throat> you know, you should be able to save a life if you have the ability to take a life. So That's um, solid advice. Something to consider. Um, the basics, life you save may be your own, Austin. That's true. That's true. That medical could save yourself. Mm-hmm. Might not even be from a gunshot wound. But I would say the basics you can carry with could you be from an angry wife. Um, who knows? Is a uh, a tourniquet, right? A cat tourniquet is super easy to apply. Um, you can find them everywhere. FYI, if you're not spending at least twenty five bucks, you're probably buying a fake one, and you shouldn't do that. Um, but I mean that should be the bare minimum. If you don't understand anything else about uh, medical, is how to apply a tourniquet. Um, past that, you can kind of stair step your knowledge up. You can start building up your supplies as you go, kind of the same way you build kit. So you can add gauze, you can add hemostatic agent like Sealox, um, you know, and it kind of it goes up from there. If you buy the preassembled kits, a lot of that stuff is already put there in the quantities that you need. Um, you know, so I, w- I would recommend like a MyFact from My Medic. Yes, they are expensive. Um, the standard one's like 125 bucks. And then the pro one that I carry is, I want to say like 225, but guys, we, I think we talked about this last week, honestly, um, life saving equipment is not where you want to skimp and be cheap as hell. You know, you want to be cheap. Like maybe don't get the $300 riser mount for your red dot. Maybe only get the hundred dollar one or use the one that comes with it. You know, just for the sake of conversation, Austin, how much was your red dot riser? Uh, what? The, How the, much did you spend on the riser for your red dot optic? You talking about the one on my LPVO, mm. or are you talking about the scope mount? No, I'm talking about the one on your 11 and a half inch. My, the one oh, that's that, on the vice. It's got an EOTech that doesn't that doesn't have a riser anymore. Okay, how about your optic then? The LPVO. How much was that? I know oh. that it has a mount. That mount has QD on it. How much was that? It looks, <laughs> it looks expensive. It's nice. <laughs> it was. Uh, it was like 150 bucks when I got it. Maybe 200. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe two hundred. Right? 200. Does your wife listen to this actively? I don't. Yeah, she's a part of this. Of course, she she knows. She, as long as I don't complain about it, she's cool with what I spend on it. But I wasn't trying to conserve money when I was doing that either. Like I knew what I was getting into and what I wanted. Plus, is the Fair. the high the high rise mount. But um, so how are we doing on time? What are we looking at? Here? Uh, we're coming up on forty five minutes. So we can do maybe one, one, two more, maybe two more. Yeah. Um, right. let's see. LPVO. Versus a red dot and a magnifier. Ooh. Based off of everything you've told me, LPVO. <laughs> um, I guess it depends on what your setup is that you're rocking. You My know? setup is looking badass, so I'm going to go LPVO. Well, John Wick had one, so I have one. Yeah, I mean, looking cool is obviously super important. 80% of being prepared is looking like a badass. Um, I would because say... Because then people won't mess with you and try to... Um, what was that phrase that we used last week? Aggressively redistribute your gear? Oh, God. Yeah, like they won't try to aggressively steal your shit? Correct. Because if you look like a badass... 
I yeah, where I'm going hopefully with that, maybe but you get my, you get the point. Um, I would say it's again, it's one of these subjective things, and there's been articles about it, there's videos about it. Um, my personal thought and feeling is, if you have something over a 14 and a half inch gun, go for an LPVO. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's under that, if you got a 10.5, an 11.5, a 12.5, you should probably go with the red dot and the magnifier, just because with the sh- the shorter barrel, right? Uh, you, the round's not going to perform as well oh, out to a distance. I would say maybe even consider a slight magnification red dot, maybe like a 1.5 times or 1.25 There's times. There's some of those uh, prism scopes out there. Um, you know, there are like three times magnifications that are fixed and stuff. You don't have right. to have an LPVO that goes, you know, 1 to 4, 1 to 6, 1 to 8. Um, there's 1 to 10s. I think Adaball has a 1 to 12 now too, but... Um, that's mild, you know, and, insane, but... And, well, I mean, and that's the thing is you, you kind of... LPVOs don't do the, they do fine with the magnification. If you crank them down to one, it's not always a true one power. So you really do have to make sure you spend real money on a, on a quality LPVO. Um, you're looking at a couple hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. You, you are truthfully, um, for quality glass. And that's the cheapest I've ever, I ever recommend to somebody is the strike Eagle from vortex. Um, for a couple reasons, I think the quality is decent for the money and vortex is a lifetime warranty. So it's, it's true. It doesn't they make a damn fine product. They yeah. really do. They figured out how to make a really affordable, really good, really strong product with a lot of longevity to it. And I think so if, if, if that's really your biggest, your biggest concern and everything is trying to build things around a best bang for buck perspective, and mm-hmm. it, which a lot of people do go vortex. They have a holographic optic, the, the UH one Huey that is, Close. Kind of ugly, if we're honest, it's but. it's it's close to an EOTech. It's it's pretty. It is ugly and it is heavy, but if you want something that's parallax free, you want a holographic optic. They have a solution for that. They have flip up magnifiers. They have several red dot optics, and they have a ton of scopes. Um, I know you run a Strike Eagle one to six or one to eight. One to six. One to six. Um, I run the Viper one to eight. Uh, which is like the next step up at, yep. at what Vortex offers. So let me ask you, what did you spend on your LPVO versus mm-hmm. what do you think you spent on your your uh, holographic site with the magnifier? So on my LPVO with the mount or without? Let's say without because without. The, it's going to come with a mount. So yeah. just without the extras. Actually, it won't. The nicer ones don't come with the mount. Okay. So like a Strike Eagle 1 to 6. I think I paid what, 250 for mine? I think you got yours around a holiday sale. So Probably, it came with yeah. their cantilever mount and you paid what, like 250, 300? I want to say it was like 240 or 250, yeah. somewhere in that range. Um, I paid 600 for my 1 to 6 uh, Viper. Okay. So then what did you pay for your EOTech and your magnifier? Um, well, the EOTech itself was like 530. Okay. And, um, then, the and then the magnifier was. Because I have the ma- the micro the vortex micro flip up magnifier, I want to say that was another two hundred fifty bucks. So so you could save yourself two hundred dollars and go get yourself uh, another rescue animal like Jax. Yeah, that, I'm definitely not doing that anytime. He has lots of charming habits, like eating the other dog's poop and digging holes under your fence. He does do both of those things, and I would not recommend a dog that does that. I mean, I love him, but don't do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a little bit situational. I mean, if you live out in the country and you have one rifle. LPVO for LPVO. sure. LPVO. You need to be Hands able to down. see people. Um, the merit there to the magnification, whether it's a flip up magnifier, because they are making those stronger now too. I think you can well, get sure, a five yeah. times. You can get up to a five times um, now. I think, um, is that, I know, uh, that EOTEX magnifier goes EOTEX the, the Gen does 2? for sure. Vortex has one now too that comes up to five times. Okay. I think aim po- if EOTEC does, I have to imagine Aimpoint does as well, mm-hmm. but I'm not positive on that, so don't quote me. Right. Um, you know, it's just the magnifiers, they don't do as good of a job at the quality and of the image and everything as a scope does. So if you're out in the open, you have one rifle, you should probably go with a 16-inch or an 18-inch barrel because you're worried about range and performance, and you run an LPVO. That could be a 2 to 10. That could be a 1 to 6 or a 1 to 8 or a 1 to 10. Um, you know, kind of, again, do your own research, understand with your price constraints what you can get. I will say that the... You know, like I said, the Strike Eagle is as cheap as I w- would go. I know you can get stuff cheaper, like Cabela's brand stuff. I would not um, recommend that. I the, did that. I fell into that hole. And yep, it's- yep. It's easy because um, they look good. Mm-hmm. Um, and it might be okay. You might get one that's decent. I don't know. But, you know, looking at some of these other brands out there, that they just don't hold up, you know. Uh, the quality of glass, the clarity. Yeah, the um, clarity the etching is, and moisture resistance. Like, these are all things yeah, that you should be taking into stuff account. Stuff like uh, True Glow and Sightmark. Probably not. You know, I could save myself one hundred and fifty dollars if I would have just, you know, decided to spend the extra hundred the first time. Yeah, 
Yeah. And that's something, you know, it's the same as true with the red dot. Um, buy quality the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to sound like a total shill for Vortex here or anything, but if you're looking for a basic red dot that is going to stand up to a whole bunch of shit, their Crossfire 2 red dot I ran on my 11, uh, 11.5 for a long time, um, and it's still running strong. It runs off the Aimpoint T2 footprint. You can get all kinds of mounts for it if you want. And if you upgrade later to an LPVO, you want to put that on an offset mount, they make T2 offset mounts. So you can do that. Again, Vortex's lifetime warranty. You can also look at the Vortex Spark. Spark um, or Spark. Well, Spark 2 is what Spark they're Spark 2. Right I now. think, And that one, I think, runs off of, instead of like the little coin size batteries, like your CR123s and stuff, um, it runs off of, actually, I think I just said the wrong battery. Um, anyway, um, the Spark runs off of a double A. Right. So you get a nice lithium battery in there, a um, little more ac- accessible, right? Depending on what your kit is. Um, if you run the little coin batteries, I can't, I, no, 50, that, that's not it. Anyways, um, you know, if you run those in your illuminated scopes and your red dots and uh, your pistol red dot sights and stuff, you have a bunch of those on hand. Cool. The CR123s, I think, are the ones that, yeah, they're the, the smaller batteries that we run in all of our lights. Um, it's what I run in my EOTech EXPS two. Um, you know, it, try to make some of these gear decisions based off of common power sources. So you don't have to carry six different kinds of batteries right. for all six different items you, you have on you. Um, try and carry two kinds of batteries for six different items. Um, or three, if you're counting your, yeah, your, your you can consolidate, it makes things, makes your life easier. Yeah. Um, I would say from an overall performance perspective, um, you know, it depends what you're going to be doing more of. If you're going to be doing more close-up shooting, go with the red dot. You know, um, if you need to reach out, go with the LPVO. I would say they both have their merits. Um, if you're looking for a best of both world experience, I, I personally, I would say go red dot with the magnifier because it's going to be cheaper. Um, you can get like the Vortex Crossfire 2 dot and the flip-up magnifier for around 400 bucks pretty good you can't always get a decent lpvo with the mount for the same money um and cheap mounts are awful don't you know the mount you can get that, the, the strike eagle one to six though with a mount for about 250 during the holidays when they're running promo sales well that or like fourth you know, of july like the freedom sale that like you can. Uh, palmetto state likes to run or whatever you just got to be you got to be gotta diligent be you got to be smart it. if you're working on a budget be smart yeah. be patient yeah, and it, and I mean, if you really do want the red dot because you're just you're not good at using, I mean, there is a learning curve to using your scope, understanding your reticle, your holds are much much more uh, critical when you're talking when you're talking out to a range. Mm-hmm. Now, wind becomes a much greater factor, right? Distance, um, yeah, all that stuff. So if you don't, if under- you shooting your bolt gun, you know, like all oh, the Coriolis effect is going to carry my bullet on an arc. Yeah, I don't. Uh, no, that's. I mean, yes, but not for anything I'm doing. You know. Um, and if you're shooting out that far, you don't, you already know the answers to these questions. You don't, you don't need my ass to sit here and tell you. Oh, no, I've seen Suicide Squad. Deadpool explains oh, yeah. it to you. Will Smith, who just smacked Deadshot, Chris Rock. Sorry, Deadshot. Deadshot, right, who yeah. just smacked Chris Rock for uh, making a joke about his wife's alopecia. Was it a joke about her alopecia? It was a G.I. Jane joke. Yes, because she has no hair. Yeah. Because she has alopecia. Okay. I re- that No, that was literally it. Uh-oh. Right. Yeah, if you guys didn't watch the uh, was it the Academy Awards or the, the Oscars, Oscars, the Oscars, whatever. The Oscars, yeah. yeah, I didn't watch them either until yeah, well, I saw I that clip. The shit out of Chris Rock. It was the funniest yeah. thing ever, and also kind of the most infuriating thing ever. The fact that there's people defending that action that's what that's what gets me I mean, going. I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm also. I'm all I don't want to go down that rabbit hole because we don't have enough time for it, and I'm already pissed off about it as it is. Yeah, I'm I'm all for standing up for your 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 lady, right? But. Um, Maybe don't hit somebody in the face on national television over a, better uh, way a joke, it. which, by the way, he was hired to write a joke. Yeah, that's kind of what the host That's kind of what comedians do, do, right? Yeah. yeah at least that's, that's why my you understanding. That's why you can't get anybody to host him anymore. Ricky Gervais can't, won't do it anymore. He did it like two years in a row, and it was great. Yeah, and then he got banned because he kept making fun of the Hollywood elites. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, we think one more. Uh, yeah, let's do a quick one. Find a quick one. We'll wrap this um do i need to buy all this stuff i'm afraid I'll, it'll max out my financial situation god no but i also feel a lot of this to be necessary um i feel like we kind of already answered a lot of different parts of this you can put together a fairly respectable kit on a decent budget as long as you are smart 
you're patient yeah. and you have you have an idea. You've already sat down with someone who maybe knows a little bit more than you, mm-hmm. and you put together a what's called a Christmas list of everything you're going to need to build your kit to be what you need. So, like for me personally, I sat down with you well, after I'd already gotten done throwing a ton of money at a 16 inch AR platform. I said I wanted something a little bit more practical for like home defense and and uh, you know just just a, a general bat. Let's call it like a not a battle rifle, but you get what I'm saying. So I yeah. ended up ordering a ten and a half inch uh, AR, um, different pistol brace, um, different bolt carrier. Actually, I upgraded the to the the nickel boron bolt carrier. You helped me with a muzzle device. You helped me with a with a handguard, yeah. uh, with an optic, and an you optic don't... mount. But those were all things that were pieced slowly. I think yeah. I, I found like a sick deal on an aim point mount for my primary arms optic. Yeah, you so don't. That everybody thinks I'm Gucci enough to afford an aimpoint. <laughs> yeah, um, you definitely don't need to do it all overnight, man. I mean, um, make measured decisions and make smart decisions. Right. Um, you know, weigh out your purchases. Uh, if you're sitting here today with none of the things that we talked about, it doesn't not mean you have to, you have to be getting seven grand together to go out and buy all this kit. No. Um, if I, I would start fundamentally, like we were talking about uh, a little earlier, start with a decent handgun or rifle. Your choice, right? And then, you know, slowly build from there. You don't need to, after I buy the handgun, go buy a battle belt with all these pouches and all these parts and all these pieces and all this stuff I don't know how to use. Um, And then go out and buy a plate carrier with plates and a radio that I don't know how to use. Uh, And then I still have to buy all this ammo. And, you know, I mean, it can be it can be a daunting task to look at. So um, start with a good foundation, right? Buy a quality handgun and buy a quality rifle. Um, quality is a, is, or I should say by a budget. If, if you're looking at a budget rifle, that's subjective. M and P sport two is a great place to start for a lot of people. I just had somebody mm-hmm. reach out to me last that week. Was, that was our first, uh, yeah, AR. that was one of the uh, Miami shooting happened still years yeah. ago and it's still running great. So, I've had yeah. zero issues with it. Absolutely. No problems with it. Uh, I think the only thing I've really upgraded internally is the bolt carrier. I think mm-hmm. I went to a nickel boron coated tool craft like a hundred dollar bolt carrier and I didn't have any issues with the old one. I just, I saw it one day at the gun shop and said, I, That's I, just shiny. Want, that. I want to take it home with me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I've had no problems with the gas system. I've had no problems with accuracy or anything. Um, if you want to get an AR, I would suggest something like that. If you have a little bit more money, maybe a Springfield saint. Um, if you want to build something you can, right. You can piece some stuff together. Just understand that, you need to know what you're looking for. So if you're building it in pieces, try and get it either a from the same manufacturer or really have a good understanding of what you're looking at. Um, for example, a lot of guys that hunt have a ton of 308. I'll just build an, an AR 10. You sure cannot you just slap Austin. Huh? I would like an AR 10. Then buy one whole from somebody because you can't just buy an upper and a lower and slap them together with the AR 10 and expect there to not be reliability issues. It's a really finicky system, and I don't know why. I just everything I've I think heard it has something read, to do with like the buffer system or something. I have trouble. Cycling. Yeah, it's probably something to do with the gas system. I've done about the 10, buffer weights, maybe even fifteen minutes worth of research on the Googler, and I'm pretty yeah. sure it has something to do with getting the buffer and gas don't go system out and, tuned. Don't go out and buy something with a crazy caliber, all kinds of crazy. Just stupid go to shit. BCM just, and write that fat check. You'll feel bad about it for you, only a little while. Seriously, you could do you could do a lot worse than BCM. You know, uh, I mean, if I, I ever build my AR ten, like if I ever get like that fat year end bonus where they're like, Hey Trevor, we recognize that you've been here spinning your wheels a while. Here's a $5,000 mm-hmm. check to show that we appreciate you. Yeah. I'm going to go spend half of that or better. Probably a little bit better. Probably Not a little bit more than better, that on an AR 10. And then I'm going to wait for the following year's bonus to buy an optic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, if you're looking to, to put something together, best bang for buck, um, you could do an M and P sport too. Um, sure. I've also heard a lot of good things about, Hey, pick up a BCM upper yeah. and a arrow, uh, precision, lower receiver. Um, they that's, have the forward that's assist, pretty good. Kind of bugs me. Uh, it's, I mean, personal preference, right. You know, um, I know we both started, uh, our AR pistols were both straight up Palmetto guns when we got them no yep. longer, but you know, that's what, that's what they started life as. You can also do it that way. If you're playing the long game and upgrade parts, you're going to spend more money. Right, sure. but if funds availability is but if your you need game, that payment plan, you got to build yeah. your gun on a layaway. You know, yeah, build it in pieces. It add affords you the ability and... to to get that home protection right now, and you just kind of fine tune it over time with things like 
muzzle device, blast forwarding devices, optics, mags, yeah, whatever you triggers, need, um, a sling, yeah. So you can you don't have to do it all right now, you know. And I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Um. Do not do not rack up all kinds of credit card debt. Do not blow your whole savings uh, account. Don't don't blow through half your kid's college fund. You know no. those are all the rookie decisions. Thing. Take a home equity loan out of your house and do it. Oh God. Y- I guess you could. Your equity's there for a reason, Austin. All right. You might as well put it to use. That's that's a very personal decision. I'm going to get into that. My wife would kill me if I use my equity if we use part of our equity line. Yeah. You know, the one that's there for home remodels and shit. Well, what she doesn't know can only hurt you. That's right. Yeah, yeah. hurt me very badly in the form of a divorce or I lose half my shit. Um, but I digress. So yeah, don't overextend yourself financially for this. Um, make smart decisions. If anything, cut your weekly spending. Cut out the trips to the bar. Cut out the nights where you eat out. Cut out trips to the movies. Cut out the extra streaming services. You'd be surprised, you know, how quickly you you can pull money together if you pay for, you know, all twelve major streaming services and you only use two of them. Cut some of that shit out. Cancel your cable and go to a streaming service. Yes, you'll save. At least forty bucks a month, and in a couple months you'll have enough money to, hey, maybe that's the new bolt carrier I wanted. Hey, maybe that's the new red dot I wanted, or a red dot if your rifle only has irons right now. So, you know, measure it out, take a look at your overall financial picture, and and make make good decisions that way. But all right, I think we're about ready to wrap it up because Jax here looks like he needs to make a boom boom. Yeah, go make a tanks. So, uh, yep, that's, uh, we actually still have stuff left on this list, so we'll be getting, I don't know when, at some point we'll be going back to this list and, and trying to And the to list is always it. growing. People, you know, not yeah. many people. If you guys want us to get to, uh, if you guys want us to get to your question, email us, prepared.mindset.pod at gmail.com. Or actually, I think it's prepared.mindset.podcast. I can never keep that straight. I should be able to. It's my own prepared.mindset.podcast at gmail.com. So, uh, shoot us a message, right? You got questions you want us to talk about on the air, uh, shoot over an email, and uh, we'll get it out there. Until next time, you guys, thanks for checking it out. Like we always say, can I do it? Get out there, can I do it? work hard, stay prepared, then, oh, and I be did prepared. It early. Son of a bitch. I hate you. <laughs>